Injuries, injuries, injuries. They are <laughs> they were at a real risk of our entire season being completely derailed. So before we review the fixtures, um, I'm going to show you the injury crisis we're currently experiencing. Ian Salvi, I was starting right back, is out for between five weeks and two months. It was a three-month injury. He's already been out for three weeks. Absolutely devastating to lose our starting right back. Not a problem. You've got a backup. Saki Denley got injured. He's out for another three days or so, but he's already been out for three weeks. So uh, all in all, probably a four-week injury. So we have been suffering at right back currently. Fabio Andrea uh, suffering an injury. He's been out for 11 days so far. Still a further nine days to three weeks to go. Uh, not a problem. You've got a backup left back. Uh, Roberto De Giulio is only just returning from an injury where he was out for three weeks. We then also suffered an injury to Matthias Lachaud. He is out for nine days to three weeks. Seven days already went through his injury. Marlon Gill. Not so much for Marlon Gill. He's only been out for three days, but I'm still counting it. David Nuno, our best centre-back at the club. He's been out for four weeks, still four to nine days to go. And yeah, our defence has been pretty ripped apart by injuries and it has definitely cost us some points. So following on from the Wolves game, last time we went away from home against Newcastle United and got beat. Mohamed Wahab, who was a striker we were interested in in the summer, got a 23rd minute goal and gave them the win. He was just a little bit too expensive for us. English striker, uh, he's doing not that great for Newcastle anyway, but... Um, he definitely got uh, his revenge on us. Next up was a disappointing 0-0 away draw against former side Birmingham. And um, just not a good game this one. We then had a one all draw against West Ham United. Again, really, really disappointing performance from us. Yuri Karaviev got us the goal in the 40th minute to put us in front. But Simon Thompson equalised in the 52nd minute. And again, just more drop points. We did then bounce back though with a 1-0 home win against Norwich City. Andy Patton in the 9th minute getting the only goal of the game. We then went away from home against Watford and 1-2-1. Former man Roman Vlasic got a goal for them, but Yuri Karaviev in a 91st minute own goal gave us three points. We then beat Liverpool away from home, because of, of course we did. Alexander got two goals inside 10 minutes to put us 2-0 in front. Coronel got a goal in the 76th minute for them, but it wasn't enough. We then won 2-1 at home against Millwall. Yuri Karaviev and Martin Alfonso getting the goals for us in this game. David Murphy made it interesting in the 49th minute. And Millwall would probably feel a bit aggrieved, not at least getting a point in this game. And finally was a 3-1 home defeat against Chelsea. Jim Garcia had put us in front 10 minutes in, but then it turned into a domination by Chelsea. And we just couldn't compete. And that sees the Premier League table looking like this. We are now sitting in fifth position. We're still only four points off the top teams. Um, and we're level on points with Liverpool in four. So Champions League is definitely still in the conversation. But with them injuries, how they've settled, it really has impacted our season. And ugh, I'll be devastated if we can't at least start competing with the likes of Birmingham, Leeds, Huddersfield. Purely down to an injury crisis mid-season. But I can't use an injury crisis to... Uh, completely explain everything that's gone wrong purely down to the fact that we're in control of the squad if we had built a better squad at least in terms of um squad depth and stuff like that in a bigger squad we might have been able to handle this a little bit better but as things stand we are really really struggling and if you look at that defense in terms of the star ratings it is dreadful rodriguez our backup center back is currently playing at right back for us i mean he can play at right back and he looks okay there but it's not ideal jim garcia it was our only fit first choice defender natural gonzalez is our backup defensive midfielder who's playing in center back currently for us adam wilson is not even anywhere close to being good enough at starting left back in the premier league but <laughs> that's where he finds himself playing david pierre and nespo in the midfield as marlon gill is still returning from injury uh, alfonso on the right pat on in the center alexander on the left and karaviev starting up top not a great, great first 11 at home against a very, very good Tottenham Hotspur side who, of course, have Mazamiru, who's starting on the bench. Uh, Mazamiru was a boy we had at Birmingham City in the Championship on loan, and he has developed absolutely wonderfully now. 28 years old English attacking midfielder. I'm surprised he's not starting because I would definitely be starting him. But um, we are at home. Can we get a win? <laughs> I don't think we can. Uh, at the very least, hopefully we can get a point. Um, let's see how it goes. So obviously the next episode in the series will be a January transfer window and it will probably be a little bit different to my usual January transfer window. I'm usually looking for first team players 
um, when we enter a transfer window, but this time I might just need to scatter gun approach, sign a load of players just to really increase the strength and depth that we've got in the squad. But we do get our first highlight four minutes in. Harper crosses it in for Spurs. We do manage to get a clear. We're closing down Macero pretty well. Is he going to get past the two of them? It looks like he's going to do well to do it. Ruggiero back to Macero. The ball's played in. And Andre Ricardo's 11th goal of the season for Spurs puts them 1 0 up five minutes in not the greatest of starts and definitely showing our defensive weakness that we're currently deploying in our first 11 disappointing to concede like that but you've just got to accept it another highlight now eight minutes in santillian jr coming down the left hand side nespo with a great challenge and hopefully now we, no, oh yeah let's do that instead corner for spurs phil fodden is the man to take and he plays it in we get it clear so the opening 10 minutes or so have been all spurs completely dominant so we are going to drop from our usual attack and team mentality to something a little bit more positive in the hopes that we can retain possession a little bit more and um not, not suffer as much the highlight does continue though 10 minutes in phil fodden gives the ball away in the midfield and alfonso can be set away down this right hand side he finds yuri karaviev pat on out wide to rodriguez our center half come on rodriguez he whips it in oh it's cleared back to alfonso in the box to oh, alexander should be putting that in the back of the net, but it's a good block by the defence. Another highlight now, Andrew Ricardo picking up the ball on the right-hand side for Spurs. That is a beautiful pass through on the left-hand side and great block by the defence to stop Fofana from scoring. Uh, we're going back to balanced. We're still not really competitive in the game going by the match stats, but we do have a highlight. 20 minutes in, Wilson whips it in. Tomasak manages to get a clear from Spurs in the defence and Santillon during it. He's on a, he's on a mission. Uh, he's got no players around him. He just bombs forward and he gets his eighth goal of the season. I mean, this is um, pretty devastating, <laughs> quite honestly. Uh, Spurs, I mean, he picks it up literally outside of his own box. And he just drives forward, absolutely no man behind him. And um, Spurs go 2-0 up. <laughs> it's continuing. More highlights, more Spurs opportunities. Oh, we win the ball back. Maybe it's a counter-attack opportunity. Alexander finds Karaviev in the box. It's a good save by the keeper. And we really need to start taking our chances if we're to get anything from this game. Rodriguez gets dispossessed down that right-hand side. The highlight continues. It's going to be another Spurs counter. Phil Fodden sets away Santillian Jr. down this left-hand side this time. Fofana can't get on the end of the cross. And Barry Rodriguez sets Alfonso away down the right-hand side. Is, is this really a highlight? Or is just football manager engine just lying to me? Yes, it was lying. Oh, Alexander wins the ball on the left-hand side. He goes for goal. It's a poor strike. Come on, Karaviev. With a free kick. Paton's there, back post. Please say it's not offside. I don't think it is. Andy Paton gets his third goal of the season. And despite an absolutely terrible performance by us so far, we do get ourselves within one goal of Spurs. Karaviev with a great free kick. The keeper's well off his line there. And Paton takes full advantage. Highlight now, Phil Fodden with a free kick just before half-time. Jensen claims it. Come on, boys. Draw a level before the end of the first half. Uh, probably not. Andre Ricardo actually gives the ball away. Um, the big kick up by Rodriguez. It's well it's well dealt with by the Spurs defence. We are not um, taking advantage of that situation. Santillan Jr. finds Phil Fodden out of Fofana. He's been pretty quiet this game. Let's just stay that way. And there we have it then. The first half is over. Crystal Palace 1, Spurs 2. Not actually that bad, <laughs> considering the team we're putting out there. But I am going to give them grief and tell them that they're not playing very well. So hopefully that fires, uh, lit a fire up their arse a little bit. Well, the second half has been completely different to the first. Barry Rodriguez, our third slash fourth choice slash sixth choice right back, gets injured, which is great. Marlon Gill is the only man the assistant manager is recommending. I know he still has a little bit of an injury as well. So um, I'm hesitant to bring him on. I'm going to bring on Roberto De Giulio, who's only just returned from injury. Our left back, playing at right back. Um, he can't do it, but we're going to have to make it work. And in terms of any other changes, I wouldn't mind taking off Alexander, but we're going to take off Martin Alfonso for Oscar Remberg on that right-hand side. And we are going to go attacking for the final 15 minutes. Hopefully, we can nick a goal back and potentially get a point. I mean, David Pierre said to a Karabayev, come on, come on, Yuri. Oh, man. Come on, lads. 15 minutes to go. Spurs have Andrea Ricardo coming down this right-hand side. He plays it back to Josier Luis. And the combine nicely feeded into the box for Fofana. And that was the easiest goal I think I've ever seen. Suleiman Fofana at the front post. Getting his 12th goal of the season. Putting Spurs 3-1 ahead. 
And yeah, it was just as simple as you like. Andre Ricardo with the ball in, and that's just too easy. I think we're accepting our fate, and we're going to suffer defeat today. But there is still 13 minutes left, and you never know. Maybe a miracle might happen, but um, <laughs> I'm not expecting it. Oh, Karaveev pinches the ball. He's in behind. Oh, Yuri, man. Oh, eh. You should be finishing that one. Please tell me I'm not just being deluded there. He should be burying that one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. The corner's played in. We haven't got Marlon Gill on the pitch, so corners are pointless as well. Five minutes to go in this match. We will make our final change of the game. Um, I am... What am I going to do? What am I going to do? I'm going to bring on Jacob Samuelson for Yuri Karaveev, who's missed a good couple of opportunities up uh, top, particularly the one-on-one. -on -one, so I'm not very happy with him right now, so... I don't mind bringing on Samuelson for the final five minutes or so. We have Spurs coming forward though through this left-hand side. Four fans in behind a poor strike. Jansen saves. Four minutes to go. Oscar Remberg picks up the ball from Pierre on this right-hand side. He cuts in and he gets a goal. Oscar Remberg's first goal of the season. We're very attacking. There's three minutes to remain and we need one more. Can we do it? David Pierre with a nice pass. Oscar Remberg made this goal though. Gets past his man, drives into the box and gets a tidy finish at the front post. Oh, there's a highlight straight from kickoff. Come on. Please don't be a Spurs chance. Please. Oh, there's so much space on that left-hand side. Uh, Right-hand side. Jesus. Jose Luis plays it in. Oh, Mazamiru comes on and gets his goal. Of course he does. Fifth goal of the season. That is game. And we're not watching the replay. So, pretty even game. All things told apart from the possession. But Crystal Palace 2, Spurs 4. Um, really, really disappointing with the result. It is expected with the sort of defence we were deploying. Um, hopefully some boys get a little bit more refreshed for this Southampton game and will look a little bit more like an actual side. Is this some sort of sick joke? Jim Garcia, <laughs> who only fit first choice defender, picks up a two to three week injury with concussion. I mean, I mean, are they trying to break me? Is that what they're trying to do? They're trying to completely ruin our Crystal Palace season. I thought this might be the year, you know. I really thought this might be the season where we actually challenge for a Premier League title. And uh, FM gods have just decided. I mean, I don't know what I've done in a previous life. It must have been horrific. One positive news. They're offering me new deals. Uh, I don't want a new deal, to be quite frank with you. Uh, Crystal Palace. I think I'm just going to walk away. I don't want to sign a new deal with you. Uh, oh, look at these, some of these players. Maybe some of these might be uh, targets in January. So, uh, as the injury crisis continues, this is our defence. Thankfully, our two fullbacks are back. Our backup fullbacks are back and are able to play in today's game. De Julio returns and Pat Saki Denley returns. The issue is at centre back now. Marlon Gill, our central midfielder, is playing in centre back. Nacho Gonzalez, our defensive midfielder, is playing at centre back. David Pierre. Nespo, Alfonso, Patlon, Alexander and Karaviev. Um, I think if Nespo is playing ball winning midfielder is not the most suitable role for him. We'll, we'll play him as a, as a Metzala. Why not? I feel like I'm slowly but surely losing the marbles. <laughs> Hopefully we can get a result against Southampton and, you know, put us back on an even footing. Back to three points. A nice little win. <laughs> Do you think it's coming? Highlights straight from kickoff. Hopefully it's a good sign. David Pierre plays the ball over the top. Comradi with a challenge in the box. It is, is it a penalty? It's going to VAR. I don't think it was. No, I didn't think it was either ref. But uh, I would have took one all day. Comradi, our former man, almost given the penalty away. Pat on, plays in the ball from post. David Pierre is there, but it's cleared. Alexander picks up. I'm, I'm assuming this is leading to nothing, but we'll stick with it just in case. Alexander, back to Pierre. Back to Saka there. Just, just finish it after the corner. Corner for Southampton. It's played in. They go close through Jovancic. So we are keeping possession in the first 25 minutes. Not really creating anything. And um, we're going to go off attack and back to positive. And uh, see if that can give us any luck. Another corner for Southampton. We can't keep doing this. Thankfully we get it cleared. And Alfonso finds Karaviev in a pocket of space. On this left hand side he has no support. Oh, oh that's a penalty. That is a penalty ref. He has given it as well, and it will be um, Alexander who steps up to take it, and he buries it. 37 minutes in, then we do go 1-0 up, and hopefully we can remain this way till at least half-time. Oh, another highlight just before half-time. It's a corner for us that's played in. It does go over the line eventually, but I believe that was offside. Karaviev does score 
it has been disallowed. So we're not going 2 0 up. We're just 1 0 up. That's fine. Crystal Palace 1, Southampton 0. Let's kick off for the second half. First highlight of the second half comes 75 minutes in. I was just going to sit here and not say anything till the 90th minute if it continued like that. The corner results in nothing. We will look to make some changes. Uh, <laughs> do we bring on Adam Wilson for De Julio? I think we need to, just in an effort to try and keep him fit. Uh, not too other many options. Calvin Sockman can come on in the centre of midfield. But other than that, I think we're struggling really. Martin Alfonso can come off for Oscar Renberg on that right-hand side. Uh, Alfonso's been a little bit poor and it might be probably something to do with him not being a right winger but he's not really getting more natural there either as Southampton almost level things up and hit the bar another highlight now it's played in a corner for Southampton we get a clear only as far as Sanders Weston's there on the right hand side please no please no there's eight minutes to go and they get the equaliser oh, I just I'm, I'm not watching it it wasn't a game we really deserved a win in, but it was a game we needed a win in. But we end up drawing. Alexander and Ross Davidson with the goals. And <laughs> we need January. So at the end of today's episode, we currently sit in sixth. We are now nine points off top of the table, Manchester City. That's probably out of the question now. It's still an okay start of the season. We've been in much worse positions than this and done really, really well. So... I have no doubt in my mind Palace will have a great season with Palace. It's just a little bit disappointing with how things have gone the past 10 games or so that we've really fell off the wagon. A lot of it down to injuries. And uh, we've got a lot of work to do in the January transfer window. Hopefully this list will look a little bit better uh, after the next episode, of, which of course will be the January transfer window. And you know how this works by now. We will be playing through the entirety. No live comms, get through as many games as we can and... Uh, see how we stand with our squad at the end of it but anyway boys if you have enjoyed today's video please consider leaving a like and if you are enjoying my content get yourself subscribed but until next time take it easy